Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to share. So we're talking about the heart's desire. So your perception, your perception is based upon your heart's desire. Now, I want you to go to Matthew 4. Please. Matthew 4. And we'll start from 1 and we'll go to 11. I'll read it out. <coughs> Some time. Time. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read it out now. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Ooh. Tempted by the devil. How many of you act like a. There's like a. Um, straight away, the flesh wants to get scared. If, if, if you're down at the park with the, with the ministry laying at night. How do you feel? Awesome, right? Because of why? The surroundings. Now, let's take away the family and you're there by yourself. You starting to get it? Sometimes you get a bit more scared in some sort of way, but um, some people end up rebuking trees and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor Gabe said you're real tough in the body's hair, but when you're by yourself, you're a bit hard enough. But, um, it's, oh, he's joking. It's a joke. So, what that, so it's, it's a mindset, but it's not an established heart. You understand it now? Pastor Tana shared. Your heart is not established when you're fearful in such, in such a way. Now, I want to share a little, little bit of um, Dan Moller's. Who knows who Dan Moller is? Does anyone know who Dan Moller is? If you don't know who Dan Moller is, do you know who Todd White is? So Dan Moller pastored Todd White. It's funny because I remember Todd, I remember, um, Todd White was sharing that. He was talking to Todd White. And, uh, Todd White was talking to Dan Moller. Uh, why being um, discipled by Dan Mole and, and Todd White was like, oh, you're my, you're like, um, you're like my mentor. Dan Mole's like, no. He goes, oh, you're like my, like my father, see that sort of thing. It's not exact words, I'm just um, going off by line. He's like, no, and, and he's trying to refer to Dan Mole with all these things, and then Todd White was a bit confused. I looked at him, what then? He goes, I'm your brother. Just simply your brother, like the Holy Spirit, your counselor. He's your mentor. He's your teacher. You know, and Jesus Christ, the Father. You know. So, um, anyway, so Dan Mola, his first demonic experience uh, he ever encountered as a Christian, ever. His first encounter. Um, he gets a phone call from this lady, and it's from this lady, and they had been worshiping, worshiping, praising God. They're in a circle, worshiping, praising God, and all this stuff and whatnot, and. Um, all of a sudden, one of the women falling in the middle of a circle started manifesting. And they start, um, obviously as Christians, they started praying for her and whatnot. And like, she just screamed and growled. Um, it's a bit hard for me to reenact because Dan Mo is very expressive with his emotions. <laughs> um, and she, he said like, she was just very like acting all crippling and growling and whatnot. And so um, the women got so scared that three of them actually ran away. They actually left the room and left the house or whatever. And so they got scared and, and they called their mother and say, whatever, this is going on from manifesting. He says, why don't you just cast it out? They said, no, we tried. And then he's like, oh, put, put the phone here and here. And so they did. And um, he started praying for her. She started manifesting, growling again and whatnot. And the girl was getting freaked out. She said, just come over. And goes, oh. All right, like for him, his mindset was just, just cast it out. The Bible just says, cast out demons, cast out the demon. And so he gets there, he pulls up there. They even have a girl at, front, at, front, at the front of the house to wave him down in case he drove past. And so he gets out, he walks into the door of the house, and he's walking down. And then the lady that called him comes up to him and says, Oh, did you hear what she said? Did you hear what she said? He goes, I'm like, I just got here. Because like, that's like the sort of state that they were in. And they, and they said, well, what did they say? And um, they said, 
that the lady that was on the floor manifesting just stood up and said, Jesus is here. And then I was like, you know, like if you heard that and you're like, yes. <laughs> Not because of boasting in himself, but boasting in Christ, knowing that Jesus is in him. And yet that the devil can see Jesus, not him. And so he walks in and he looks at her. And um, when they went there, there was, a, there was actually a woman there that was pregnant, trying to cast a demon out. And so, trying to pray the demon out or whatever. And the lady sat back up again with her eyes closed and looked at the pregnant woman and said, You shouldn't have done that. Now I'm going to kill your child. See, some of you said, Wow. Oh, the devil's gonna kill us. You should see how Dan Mola does it. It's crazy. He runs around and saying, Oh, the devil's gonna kill us. That's the initial fall of the flesh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. When the demons fear and tremble, Jesus Christ who is within you. Now, if you don't have that understanding, you gush, that means your heart is not established on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is it making sense? Yeah. People aren't falling asleep? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in that, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and then all of these things he gets he gets tempted with, right? And then he tempts him with what? The word of God. I remember Minister was sharing, how, how stupid is that? He tempted the word of God with the word of God. <laughs> and Jesus said, It is written, it is written, it is written. Yeah. He may as well just said, I wrote this, I wrote this, I wrote this <laughs> to the devil. Do you understand? Yeah. Because his heart was established, his main focus and goal was to do, do the will of the Father. He said, This is his meat to do the will of the Father. Another another scripture in here is um it's Matthew 16, and it's the story about Peter. Um, I'll, I'll hurry on. I don't want to take too long. So the story of Peter, Jesus says, Who do men say that I am? And then they come up with all these answers. And then Peter says, You are the son of the living, living God, right? I just want to get it right. What verse is it? 16? 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then what does Jesus say? Scroll down a bit. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Rest art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, do you understand that scripture? Mm-hmm. Now I want you to scroll down to verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Saint dude, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. <laughs> flesh. Shouldn't have done that, I'm going to kill your baby. Uh, flesh. Shouldn't have done that, I'm going to kill your baby. I said, you were dead before I even got here. Leave. He established mind and the mindset are two different things. Your heart needs to be established on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus rebuked Peter to the face. This is a disciple he raised. The faith. He rebuked him to the face and called him Satan. In front of all the disciples. That they may fear and have the understanding. Don't be mindful of what man think. But what I have come to teach you. Now in that understanding. In a sense of perception, mindset, desire. You have to protect your desire. Your desire must be the will of the Father. Now when something comes contrary, remember what the white blood cells do in the body? It comes to fight against any invaders or infections. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and something tries to come contrary to us, we need to stand and fight against any infection and invaders, which is the enemy and that unbelief. Amen. But they don't know how to be free. And Paul says, casting down imaginations. The word imaginations is the Greek word logismos. Now, this word logismos is where we get the word for logic or logical thinking. 
there are two kinds of strongholds, logical and illogical, rational and irrational. A logical stronghold is actually the hardest one to deal with because it makes sense. For instance, if God tells you to give a gift, a financial gift, a logical stronghold says, you can't do that, you don't have enough money. But yet the Holy Spirit just told you to give. Now a logical stronghold is controlling your obedience to God. You're living by your logic rather than by what the Spirit of God said for you to do. And your obedience is now hindered because you've been taken captive by something that's very rational, something that's very logical, but it's wrong because God's told you to do something else. That's a logical stronghold. Then there are illogical strongholds. And these are the easiest to deal with because they're so dumb that eventually you recognize this has got to be the devil speaking to me. It's like a skinny person who believes they're fat. They look in the mirror day after day. They're just a little skinny rail. And every time they look in the mirror, they think, oh, I'm so fat, I'm so fat, I'm so fat. Everybody knows that's a lie. That's an illogical stronghold. And eventually, illogical strongholds get so out of control that you know this is the devil talking to me. And I'll give you a very funny example. My sister, many years ago, had a little Yorkshire Terrier. And that little Yorkie would crawl up in the bed at night and would sleep in her bed with her and her husband. Well, the dog got worms. So they had the dog treated, and after a period of time, my sister began to have headaches. And she had never had headaches before. And one day I was with her, and she just broke down, and she said, Rick, I've just got to talk to somebody. I have to talk to somebody about a fear that I have. I said, well, tell me, what is your fear? She said, well, you know, I have these headaches and never had headaches before. My little Yorkie had worms. I said, what does a worm, a, a dog's worms, have to do with your headaches? She said, well, the little Yorkie would crawl up on my pillow and would sleep next to my head at night. And Rick... I'm so afraid that those worms crawled in my ears and that I've got worms in my brain. I laughed so hard. I said, Rhonda, that explains all your problems. You've got worms on the brain. And when I began to laugh, she realized how ridiculous that was. That was an illogical, irrational stronghold. And once she brought it out into the light, it just dissipated and went away. I remember one time um, when we were at the house, um, we, we we were so convinced that the Lord wanted us to move out into a, another two-story house down the road. And um, Dennis comes running in and he's like, Oh, I've got, I've got a, a pamphlet. We looked at the pamphlet. It was that house that we were talking about that was just down the road. Not long after that, Nia texted and she's like, Oh, I've seen a house on the, um, the main market or on the, the house market. And she showed us the, 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 um, the internet link. And we, clicked, we, we searched it up. It was the exact same... It was the exact same mm-hmm. house that Dallas came in and we were like so convinced that we went there and we were like, oh, and we were like, thank you, claim me the house and we didn't get it. <laughs> because we were so bored up, like, that's what a, a, a illogical, uh, a logical, uh, logical stronghold does, is when you start, com- start fooling yourself and think, this is from the Lord. <laughs> and then you start making your own confirmations instead of allowing the Lord to make your confirmations for you. And you start fooling yourself, oh, this is from the Lord, this is from the Lord. So it comes down to the desire. There's, there's something that, um, remember that, that lady, what's her name? Uh, Chloe, the one on the wheelchair? What did she say? I've had dreams, uh, a fantasize about yeah. crashing and ending up paralyzed because her desire was there. So it's the start of playing around with you. Not saying that God cannot give you dreams, of course He can. And that's why Dad always says to pray on what you see in the visions and the dreams that you have. Pray on it. Because they may be, may be just adding to, your, to a stronghold that God never intended you to have in the first place. Chapter 5 in the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 10, starting from verse 3. The scripture that we're going to 
Let's just say. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We've read this scripture many times and if you understand where it's coming from, let me just break something down first. Imaginations, uh, most, most people got, uh, got the revelation already. Don't jump on every imagination and think that it's a bad thing. It's only the ones that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Amen? Amen. Put scripture into context. Okay, so this is, um, this is something that really stood out to me. I shared this before as well. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not flesh, not the things that you, you know, have on the outside. Um, and look at this. But mighty through God, listen, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations. And what I was sharing before was um, idolatry wasn't just something that you hold, that you look at like with your phones or whatever, the, the tangible physical things. Because remember, when Jesus came with the doctrine, with the new covenant, the new testament, everything is spiritual. What happens on the inside will manifest on the outside. Amen? Amen. Pulling down, casting down, they were both at a place where they were exalted. When you're going to pull something down and cast something down, where was it in the first place? Where was the stronghold? It was somewhere up high. Where was the imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God? It was somewhere high. It was an idol form of idolatry in your mind before it came out over here. Does that make sense? You're already idolizing things that, even things that you might not even have yet. And you want it so bad, or even if you're coveting or whatever, it's just something that you've already got in your mind. Your mind is set and focused on having or keeping a sin or whatever it is. The stronghold that you have, understand that when it's a pulling down, it's a casting down, it's because it's something that's exalted in your life, in your mind. And it's and it's not just where it was in the mind, it's because it's something that dwelt and rooted itself in your heart. It's gone so deep within your heart, and there the desires that just keep filtering through. And then everything that you want, everything that you see, everything that you perceive will just come through what you want. Does that make sense? It says, every high thing that exalted itself puts itself in a higher state against the knowledge of God. The way to find it, bringing into captivity. Amen? Amen. Everyone say, bring it into captivity. Bring it into captivity. What does that mean? Bring it into captivity. Bring every thought, nothing physical at all. Take your mind away from the physical. Look at this. Every time you see something, perception, and every time it starts to filter through into your mind, bring every thought that's not of God to God. Because if, if you look at it, it says, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Not the thoughts that are already godly. The thoughts that are ungodly, the things that are trying to come against the knowledge of Christ. Amen? Yeah. You understand this? So, um, everyone learning? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So that was just the foundation of things that we wanted to show you. Now we're going to move to the other part of the study, which was um, what we originally got was having the knowledge of the Word and hiding your sin. Who you are when you got saved? Who had sin? Who has ever tried to justify it with the Word of God? This is what we... This is what we want to hit on as well. Just these things. Not talking about big scenes that people have had. Not talking about that. 
We're talking even from the slightest thing, the smallest thing. Because if we can stop the leaven, then we can stop the love. Make sense? We're talking about from the little things that you do, that's what, that's what we want to help you to, um, to, to start off from here. Amen? Like, I'll share for example. Um, I was asked, like, like um, do you remember um, I shared on, I had a friend at work who does the, looks up the Illuminati stuff and that. So he said, oh, you know, you should watch this movie. It talks about, it shows, um, you know, Fast and Furious 7. It shows God's eye. I said, what's that? It says how they can track people everywhere and this and that. I said, oh, okay. So I went and watched it. Just watched it online. I was like, okay. And then you should watch this movie also. It's got this, it's got that. Okay. Nothing was mentioned after that. And then I started watching movies on my own. <laughs> I started to just watch it because I went from discernment and I knew that, I, that my flesh was enjoying it. And you know what happened? I cut it off. Why? Because can movies be bad? Yeah, of course. It's not a rule that you just got to play some people. Don't go watching movies. But if you know your heart, you can say to people, you can say to everyone, oh yeah, I'm just going to get the surf. Yeah, sure, okay. You know your heart. That's why we done the study. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just sharing that because even sometimes you would, like, this is what I mean, even having the knowledge of the word, that you would preach on your sin, not telling people that you have the sin, but you will preach on the kind of sin that you're going through as a throw off, so that people wouldn't see that. Does that make sense? Pastor's just going to share more about that. Thanks, Pastor Gabriel. Now, in saying so, I'll throw that back into you. Not everything somebody preaches their sin in you. Charity's laughing because she understands what I just said. <laughs> just because someone's preaching on something doesn't mean they're sinning. That's the balance. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. And verse 6 says, But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. You see the balance there? Quite. <laughs> Everyone's thinking, thinking about your current sin. Huh? <laughs> so, um, with eldership, discussing issues, it's, um, it's amazing because it first starts here. And uh, the Lord was really showing me, I think a few weeks ago, a thoroughly examined, thoroughly examined, thoroughly examined. Thoroughly examined. Thoroughly examined. This is not just when the Lord tells you to. It's constantly. All the way up. Because we are cost constantly being washed by the word of God. Which is how the desires get fixed in your heart. Does that make sense? So when you have desires in your heart that are not meant to be there. Through the washing of the word of God. You are made clean. Yes? Mm -hmm. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to mention, I've got a uh, few notes here, uh, just a few sins. Now, uh, I'm going to correct myself here because I had told some people that maliciousness also means gossip, which it doesn't. But maliciousness is... Um, comes quite frequent in gossip. Does that make sense? Who knows what maliciousness is? Half a person. Okay, I'll look it up. And it. <laughs> I say half a person and someone put their hand halfway out. So. <laughs> so, half of a hundred. <laughs> Everyone having fun is enjoying this? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's 
<laughs> you know how I got this? Did you know how I knew that I had maliciousness? I asked the Holy Spirit to pray for me, and that's what I am. How many of you pray in the Holy Spirit? That's convicting. So malice, uh, malignity, malice, ill will, desire to injure. Wow. You know what I mean? Desire to injure. Wickedness, depravity. Wickedness that is not ashamed to be break, to break, break laws. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Wickedness that is not ashamed to break laws. Wow. wow. And the third point is evil trouble. <clears throat> I, if you knew me in the world, I was a bit yappy, very yappy, sorry, not a bit, very. And gossip was a big thing for me. Um, it's how I manipulated people, deceived many. So maliciousness, I said, the Holy Spirit to speak for me, and I was praying, praying, and when I was praying, the words were uttered, I repent of maliciousness. I said, what? I haven't heard that word in a while. I haven't read that word in a while. I said, that's how I know it was the Holy Spirit. And I, and I said, Lord, I don't even know what that even means. And then I looked up the definition, and it means to do evil. And they, and they even said, it's not a shame to break the law, which means you're happy that you do it. Which means you, you enjoy breaking the law because I'm not ashamed. Prideful. I said, Lord, I don't like doing evil. I'm like, I thought I got on to you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some people have. Right? And so I started searching the word malicious more, more, and more, more. And I started, I seen it referred to gossip. I was like, wow. How many of you say, man, I've been discerning this, I've been discerning that, and oh yeah, I see this person on this issue, and all of a sudden you're talking about them, and all of a sudden they're evil words, and now you're in maliciousness, and now you like talking about it, that's why you can't stop. To do evil, and not to be ashamed, and it says this, not to cast a stumbling block before your brethren, what did you just do? Yeah. A currency. A currency. Did you know this? I'll, I'll say this with confidence. Did you know people know about? Um, I remember Charity was sharing about it. A hidden God idol that you worship called Ram Fan. Is it Ram Fan? Ram Fan. Ram Fan. It's um. You know, deep inside and in your spirit and in your in your soul, you know you're doing something wrong but you continue to ignorantly turn away because you're not ashamed but yet you don't want to expose which is why you always have to challenge by yourself behind doors you know that? it's a current sin what's a current sin what's the word current mean now present now in doing what we learn current also means where the waves are going? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, current means present. Means now. I've done a bit of um, research on some some words on um, I think it's Galatians five. It talks about the fruits of um, unrighteousness and the fruits of righteousness. A lot of the time we, a lot of the time we go into Galatians five to look at the fruits of the spirit in the sense of um, walking in them, right? So, how many of us go in Galatians five to look at the look at the works of the flesh in the sense of examining? If it's in here? Has anyone done that? Yeah. yeah? Praise the Lord. Did you find heaps and heaps? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so uh, fornication, so fornication in the strongest fires definition, it um, also falls under adultery and incest. Uh, anybody know what incest is? Oh, yeah. It's pretty gross. I mean, 
you said you'd read it. So, one of the definitions is sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman, the worship of idols, illicit sexual intercourse, homosexuality, lesbian, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, sexual intercourse with close, close relatives. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord that they do that stuff, but praise the Lord you have the knowledge that you don't do that stuff. <laughs> Give God glory. That's what praise the Lord means. And one word stuck out to me in that definition was illicit. I wonder what illicit means. Now, illicit means forbidden by law, unlawful, unauthorized, or prohibited by a code of official or accepted rules. I just found that definition interesting. Illicit. It means um, you're not meant to do it. It's unlawful. So when Jesus says, this is adultery, when a man looks at a woman with lust in his heart, he's already committed adultery with her in his heart. He just fornicated. If you looked at a woman with lust in your eyes, would you say, I just fornicated? No, why? Because it takes the depth of what you're doing and exposes it and you're too ashamed to, them to, to say, oh yeah, this is what it is. Sometimes you say, this is what it is. It'll be shameful. So you go with the word adultery because it's hidden. And you look at this. I say this in the comment guys. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, okay? I'm going to make sure. I'm not pointing at fingers at anyone. I want to use this as an example. You will, you will be edified. Now, in the sense of looking at a man or a woman to lust in your heart, you can be fornication with that person, right? So aren't we all here brothers and sisters in Christ? You get it? Fornication, adultery, incest? Wow. You see how it ties in? That's just to edify your, your understanding. Not in the sense to like... You know, look at walk around like this in the ministry, so you know. Hey, thank you, man. To the pure things. Understand that we are a holy priesthood, a royal nation. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to go to uncleanness. Uncleanness. So, uncleanness is impurity, physical in a moral sense, and impurity of lustful. Um, can't read my own writing. And it's gone. Profligate. Living and impure motives. You hear that? Living in a, an impure motives. Now, profligate, I was a bit interested. I didn't, I didn't know what that word was. Is that up there? Yeah. Profligate? Oh, you just remember. Profligate. That's a weird word. So I looked it up, and this is what it means careless, foolishly, wasting money, materials, etc. Very wasteful. Just being very wasteful. Profligate, uncleanness. Um, it says in the scriptures, do not cast your pearls before the swine. Meaning, some people are being wasteful in the sense of the anointing within you and what God has given you. Uncleanness. It's not only in the mind, it's also what you do. Does it make any sense? Current sin. Now, covetousness. I like that Because people hide behind that with laughter. Is it true? Well, that's a nice verse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to. True? Yeah. True? But did you know it's done continuously, continuously, continuously in some people? Yeah. Wait, bro, you want to shout me a coffee? No, nah, just joking, bro. Latte. <laughs> is it true? Is it true? Yeah. You're thinking about it in this sense. Not only are you coveting, but you're manipulating and deceiving. Mm. Wow. Now let's take it back. Now let's go, let's go back to this. Let's go back to um, maliciousness. What did it say? It's not a shame of what it does. Which why laughs? Which why you laugh? 
get it deep now, eh? Like, even the littlest things, the littlest things. That's a nice jacket. How about this one? You've got, you've got only a t-shirt on and it's cold and you stand next to somebody with two joggers. Did you get it? Some people are covering people's clothes and you don't even have to say anything. You can go up and stand next to someone in the sense of manipulating them here based on physical appearance. Pretty crazy, eh? <laughs> Praise Jesus. Amen. Now, covetousness. Covetousness, sorry. Greedy. What's that word? Did you hear what I'm doing? Inquisitive. The Christian. Grasping a variance, uh, meaning, meaning having or showing a strong desire for especially material possessions. Covetous implies. Sorry? Oh, is that up there? Oh, you swear. Covetous. Covetous. It's not there? Anyways. Praise the Lord. Now, are you grasping and understanding? Grasping and understanding? Current sin is to be dealt with. Current sin means to be dealt with through here. The knowledge. If you're, if you're not dealing with the sin and it continues to continue, 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 it's because maybe you're here. Maybe your mindset's over here and it's not in here. I was sharing with one of the brothers, I was struggling at work to turn up on time and to go there like, and, and like throughout the whole day it would be a struggle until I came to the mindset in glory to God, today's going to be a good day. No matter what, glory to God. Um, at my workplace we've been faced with some awesome challenges and this is how important it is to have a victorious mindset, right? Um, my uh, the challenges that we come up against was come up against was actually like it was crazy, and um, we had a replacement for our project manager because he had went on holidays for a month, and it was just out of out of mess. And he come up to me on Friday because the job's done, and, and thank God that um, glory to Jesus that it was all sorted and it was all done. And um, he come up to me and says, oh, I want to thank you and Alex for the good work that you've done, you know, like, it was good. When I first got it, it was a mess, I didn't know what to do and whatnot. But he said, there was these positive words I kept remembering that you said to me. And um, you said, um, God is with us. You understand the importance of the mindset and the desires in the heart? Current sin. I had a saying when I first started uh, walking, and this is what it was in reference to sin. Kill it before it kills you, because it will. Kill it before it kills you, because it will, if you don't kill it. Amen? Does everyone know what procrastination is? Yeah. 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 When you leave something that you should have done for later? Did you know that procrastination uh, falls under trust? They, they, did, they did studies on that. Um, uh, they, they put some uni students through an experiment to see whether they procrastinated doing their assignment and stuff like that. And so um, they found out that there were two different people that they were dealing with was the current person and the future person. That's like us now. And a lot of people procrastinate because they don't want to deal with the stress at that time. Like they gave them assignments and stuff like that. But like there was a lot of pressure with the research and studying and then doing the assignment and whatnot. So they, they left it off. So they, this is what they did. I'll leave this assignment for future you. And I sat there and I was like, wow, oh, show me more. And he said, um, 
A lot of people don't want to put off the works of the flesh here because they have faith that they can put it off here. They have they, they trust the future self rather than the current self, and that's why it talks about like preaching. Preaching is not bad. Like what well, um, Pastor uh, Pastor C. C. was talking about the current sin. Obviously, if you've ever caught something, then well, you know, glorify the Lord in it. But it says here, to put off the old man, the works of the flesh here, while, it's, while it is today, put it off. Because a lot of people have that faith, they trust the future self to get rid of it, but they don't know this is where the leaven begins. Leaven until it's a whole lump, makes it harder. And that's what um, Pastor C was sharing about, um, getting rid of it now. Kill it now before it kills you. It's really important. Like we are dying daily, but we should be. And it's like this. Paul said, "Die daily," as in I die today. Tomorrow I will die again, again and again and again. It's dying daily. No longer I die, but Christ lives in me. So that was. I want to share. I want to share something on that. Knowledge is, is not bad to have knowledge. Yeah, like, just in case you guys are just like, I don't want to learn anything else, but it is good to have knowledge, just the way we use it. There is an intention of the heart of how you use the knowledge. Um, let's go to... Uh, this is another... This is another... Um, this video. Something the Lord showed me in having the knowledge of the word and hiding sin. Something the Lord, the Lord has shown me in having the knowledge of the word and sort of concealing sin was um, Matthew 7, then to get to it, Matthew 7, 15. This is not just here, but everywhere. That's why it's, it's really important to discern. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are reven revening wolves. Now, the concept that I'm pointing to is the inward man versus the, the manifestation that they show on the outside. Because they have the knowledge of the word. It's like this. Oh, in order for me to have my sin, I know that I'm supposed to be a Christian, so I know that I'll act like a Christian. Does that make sense? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll throw it on. Actually, just go to... Yeah, so the Lord showed me. Does anyone know what a camouflage is? Yeah? Does anyone know what mimicry is? Mimicry. When, when, when something else mimics something else and takes the form of that thing. I want to show you something. It's really cool. I have to admit I was screaming when I got this video thing. What makes a marine biologist scream? Roger Hanlon captured this about 10 years ago. He was doing a study in the Caribbean and he'd been following this octopus for about an hour. When it crept behind the rock and went into camouflage mode, he jammed the camera down right in its face, so to speak, prompting it to go from camouflage to a startle defense. Blanching white very quickly. And then inking him. But I followed the animal and finished the dive, and I popped at the surface. It was only about five feet deep, and I screamed bloody murder, and they thought I was having a dive accident. When actually he was having... It was a eureka moment, there's no doubt about it. And that's because Hanlon is trying to understand just how camouflage works in cephalopods. Yes, yeah, cephalopods, squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. They are masters of optical illusion. They are the animals best known to go anywhere in camouflage. No animal comes even close to the speed and diversity of appearances of this animal. And they have a few tricks at their disposal. Octopus and cuttlefish can change their skin texture. This is the only animal group we know of that has fine control of its skin to create the bumpiness. And they match their skin dimensionality by sight, not by touch, which so is a... vexing visual perception question. 
and of course they change color. So here's an octopus. Doing what we call the moving rock trick. I'm a rock, I'm a rock. Now watch this. So the amazing thing is that these animals are colorblind, yet they are capable of creating color match patterns. But we don't know how. That's the model to have um, so how awesome is it though? The Lord showed me that. And that walks will go, will, will, yeah, like the Bible talks about false prophets and false apostles and whatnot, and they, they come to you in revenue, uh, as revenue wolves in sheep's clothing. And that's something that the Lord showed me in um, the knowledge, knowledge, knowing something to try and hide something else. You see, it says, the, the um, researchers said that. They don't go by what they touch, they go by what they see. It's like this. Um, there was a fault. Do you guys, everyone remember the false apostle that came and, and, so, and um, Apostle Tui confronted him at outreach? Yeah. Everyone remember that time? When he came in and he was saying that he's an apostle sent from the Lord and saying he's a pastor <laughs> and commending himself. And, and he was showing, this is what he kept saying, man, praise the Lord, this is awesome, praise the Lord. He sounded like us. Some, some of the guys were even drawn to him. Some of the guys were even drawn to him. He was complimenting them and saying, you got to be a mighty man. Um, like, you know the spirit of divination in the book of Acts. And then he was exposed that night. And praise the Lord, but you will get that in your walk. Something the Lord showed me was yeah, coming, coming into, not saying that everyone should be perfect when they come to when they come before the Lord, you have some something that, that the Lord will take out of you. But this is the thing. When you're intentionally hiding a sin that you don't want to get rid of, this is what's going to happen when you enter a room full of Christians. Say, so for instance, there's worship. Everyone's got their hands up. What do you think the mimicry is going to, going to look like? They'll come in, raise their hands up to you. Just like the octopus, it blended into its surroundings. That's what the sermon is. The thing, what we're teaching you here with the whole knowledge and perception and desire and everything is your accountability, what you know, what you'll be accountable for. You need to discern the things. You know, it's funny, the ownership has seen it as well. And I can admit as well, there will be times where I'll come in with a trial and, and I'll try and keep my focus on the Lord, but I knew that I had to go out there and let it, uh, give it to the Lord completely. You know what I mean? And that's what it is, like, something, there's something, there's uh, the counterfeit fruits. You've got the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and then you've got the counterfeit ones, where there's, for instead of meekness or humility, there's false humility. Instead of joy, pure joy in the Lord, there's a fake laugh. Has everyone, everyone experienced that before? Yeah. Where you know someone's going through something, man, just tell me. Like, let it out. And they're still trying to hide it behind a fake laugh or fake peace in the Lord. Or, and that's what it is. It's, it's knowing the word. The reason why they do these things is because they know the word. And you know what's awesome is that. This ministry is not hiding anything. We, if we're going to hit it, we're going to hit it on the head and right in front of us. We're going to deal with things. We're going to deal with it in a manner that's according to the gospel. So, how can you tell a false prophet or a false apostle? A lot of people go straight to the fruits. 1, two, one Thessalonians 1.5 for our gospel came not only you, uh, not unto you, in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Someone that is truly from God, a ministry that is fully from God covers all areas, not leaving some undone and doing the only the areas that they love to do. Something that tickles your ears. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, so it's um, 
It is amazing what the Lord. If, does everyone know what a chameleon is? Yeah, like a lizard that changes colors according to its moods. Okay, we'll put on the video. Dad, mom shares and the elders share if there's anything the confessions just get rid of it now. Gorilla gorilla here, current, now. They don't trust the future you to get rid of it. Die here. Amen. Now like get rid of it. Because by the time we get to there, if God willing we do get there, we'll be living we'll be living out and we'll be a lump. You know? So yeah. So, we're sharing this because when you do have that knowledge of the Word and you're trying to conceal your sin, these are little throw-offs that people will try and do so that you could um, you know, hide your sin. It's like, I'm going to copy someone, I'm going to mimic someone in how they're worshipping or in, in, in how they're reading their Bible because that way... He won't show my sin. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're showing you the throw-offs and why we're showing you that is so that you can identify that in your own walk. Mm. Whether you be aware of, aware of it or not, I'm pretty sure you are aware of it. Just the, I'm not talking about big overwhelming things that happen. I'm talking about just the, the smallest things in your walk. If you're doing something where you're trying to just copy someone, trying to adapt to someone because you're trying to conceal something, you need to check yourself. We went to New Zealand a couple, how long? Um, Three weeks know, ago. That, that long ago. Went to New Zealand. So the flight there was amazing. I want to share an awesome experience I had on the flight. The, the, the chairs were. Whoo! Help me, Lord. No. Um, so even before we left at the airport, I was asking them, I was like, are the chairs like big? You know, can, can, can I fit in that and everything? Oh, yeah, so big, you can fit. And I'm like, okay, praise the Lord, you know. So we got on the plane. <laughs> Me, Pastor, and MJ, you know the, the middle aisle, it's got three seats. How that's, that's a seat and a half, that's not three seats. Realistically, three really small people could maybe fit in there. So when we, when we sat in the chairs, Oh, praise the Lord, the trip was only, what, two hours or whatever it was? Any longer, I don't know. So when we sat in the chairs on the side, you know how it's got the... Uh, Armrest. The feet? Armrest. Armrest, okay. Calm down. You know, how it's got that thing. The middle ones, they can go up. But the ones on the sides, they can't. There's a point to my story. Hold on, hold on. So when we, were, when we sat in the plane... Because it's so small, I was, I was sitting on the side. MJ, she almost disappeared in between me and past <laughs> Because it was so squashy. And then, while the plane took off, it was like my leg went into this little gap. <laughs> and I could feel the pain. I was like, wow, man, that really hurts. I was trying to adjust it. So eventually, I just left my leg to kind of 
And I felt like a big dick in my leg, and I was like, oh, well, you know, praise God, I guess I'm already starting to kill my flesh. <laughs> and then I got to New Zealand. Yeah. Halfway through the trip, or probably, probably when we were almost there, I was saying as a joke to the um, MJ and my son, I said, you know what the amazing thing about the body is? You go through so much pain, but then eventually it just numbs it out. <laughs> you know, it really did. Like, I got to a point where it was just numb. Like, I couldn't feel it anymore. My leg was under there, and I was like, just looking at my leg, and I was like, I don't know, we became one or something. So, it wasn't until I went to, when we, when we went to get off, and I went to pull it out, and like, it's like all the blood came rushing back. So, it was so slow, I was put, I was like, ah! Let's go to scripture. Galatians chapter 4 verse 9. But now after that ye have known God, or rather unknown of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye, ye desire again to be in bondage. So something that I got from that was Unless you're in something for so long, unless you're consistent in something for so long, then, okay, let me give you an example. If you harden your heart for so long, at first the conviction will be strong, but eventually your heart will harden against the conviction. True? Just like if you're training or whatever, eventually you get better. So if you want to see it, eventually you get better at hardening your hearts. I'm not saying that so you can do it. You know what I mean? I'm saying it because it says... Oh, sorry. It says... Let me just break the scripture down for you. How turn ye, meaning return, again, as a form of repetition, to the weak and beggarly elements, to the weak and the... All things like, you know what a bigger is, right? Whereas he desire, let me tell you something about the word desire. To will, to like, to do, to crave, strong feeling of wanting to have something, something that you wish, says again, form of repetition, to be in bondage, to be a slave. That makes sense? That you could harden your heart so much and you don't even know what you're doing while you're hardening your heart, that you grow a callous over your heart. And all it's doing is you desiring, you're having a craving to be a slave. But because it looks pleasing to the flesh, you don't know what your spirit is. Because the flesh is being exalted and the spirit is in slavery. It's in bondage. And it's a form of repetition that you keep doing that. And where does that happen? Up here. You're not in slavery in the flesh in, that, in what you look like out here. But in the mind, you're a prisoner and it's not of Christ. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. You've numbed out what Christ has given you. Yeah. Does everyone remember um, the text I sent out a text a while ago with the Willy Wonka man? Yeah. Anyone remember that? Yeah. I think he said, um, I'll just act dumb and play like that. I don't know what you're talking about. Until you figure it out. Or oh, I'll just, he, what did he say? I'll just play stupid and act dumb until you figure it out. That's what, what he said. And that's, that's something that, that falls off what, um, what Pastor Gary was talking about when you tell us over your heart, you start trying to act like you don't know when you really do know. You just brushing it off until someone finally figures it out. Something that I found awesome in the body of. In, in, normal body is that if they don't work in unity it doesn't function properly just like the body of Christ this this can point to your individual walk as a person but ultimately this points to the unity of the body of Christ there has to be one desire one focus and the things that we perceive are the things that we allow to flow through into the ministry this is what filters it. That's where, remember when, when we, we, we get pastors coming in and talking every now and then, and then after the pastor leaves, this is what dad says, did anyone discern anything? And you've got various hands go up, 
and he gets volunteers to come up. What did you do? This, that, I just went, yeah. That's the filtering, yeah. So you know what is good and what is evil, and therefore, ultimately, your focus remains on Christ, and we as a body move forward. Um, 1 Corinthians 8, 13. This is something the Lord ministered to me this week. This week, I think, or last week, a while ago. Um, wherefore, if me make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. This is Paul talking about desire. Him knowing that, yeah. The Lord showed me this desire. If my desire causes a stumbling block to a brethren, this is what he says, as long as this world stands, I will leave my desire, lest he stumbles. Um, I, I shared it with a couple of the brothers outside last night. Um, there was a time in our, me and my wife, I want to share this, hey, yeah? A, there was a time in our marriage where I would fellowship with some of the brethren and my wife wouldn't, my wife would come up and she was like, why do you always fellowship with them? Why do you always fellowship with me? In particular, they were women. And, um, and I sat back and I was like, she was weak in this area. And so my desire to fellowship with certain brethren, I had to pull back and I was like, okay, as long as, she, as uh, if she's weak, then I will pull back until she she gets stronger, and then I start fellowship with the brethren that she was. But that's what I mean. When the body of Christ wants to work in unity, it needs to prefer the other body or the body parts before itself. Amen. For me to get to that door, my legs have to work in unity to take my body. You won't see anyone. I was demonstrating with the boys outside. You won't see anyone. Walking to the door like this. <laughs> Unless you're gonna have a fight. It's true. The legs work in unity. One has to go back and the other forward and alternate. And that's how the body works. To, to, um. So, <laughs> in order for us to move in unity, is preferring the weaker brethren or each other above our own. Having the interest, um, lifting each, uh, other, other, someone else's interest above your own. Very much. That's the mind of Christ. Lifting others above yourself, preferring another above yourself. That's what it is. Look, the desire. Sometimes we'll have something like we want to do things, but we know that it can affect someone else. And because it pleases us, we don't care about the other person's interest. But Paul makes it so clear on Corinthians, he says, Therefore, if me, if my brother who's weak in the faith is stumbling because I like me, and then he says this, I'm not saying for everyone to go vegetarian, I'm saying look at me as your desire. He says this, as long as this world stands, I'm not going to eat of, no, of any flesh. I'll eat no flesh as long as That's a commitment that a brethren, that's a commitment that someone that loves the brotherhood would make you know what I mean yeah so um, finger pointing that's, that's easy I've done it before and I know you all have done finger pointing before <laughs> but this is what it is a lot of people they do this um, to hide their own sin simple point at someone else's sin you know what I mean but this is what Jesus said on the Last Supper tonight. He, he said, um, one of you is going to betray me. The disciples said this, Lord, he said, I. They didn't point at anyone else. The disciples stood up and said, Lord, is it I? They pointed to themselves, each of them. Lord, is it I? The examination was pointing back to themselves. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just want to share a scripture of what I was saying. Um, Philippians 2. Oh, yeah. 
I've got this last one. Uh, one, two, five. It says, if there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, if we hear my, my joy, we be like-minded, having the same love being us of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, by loneliness of mind, let each esteem another better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to cry. I'm just cold. Um, yeah, so um, that's the, the second commandment. Loving your neighbors as thyself. And I was, um, I'm ready for Virginia last night. Um, when we had the men's fellowship, and it's it's really important to put others before yourself because it says, um, "How many of you in the money hand of God and He was up to you two times?" So yeah. Um, Pastor Gabriel shared about being aware, having the knowledge of being accountable. I want to take you guys through a little activity if you guys want to partake. Um, you bring the communion. Nice. And then I want you guys to just lift your hands. Lift your hands up. Both of them. Both. Lift both hands up. Just just lift it up above you. And I want to say to you, I want to say, you want to alternate, I want to say, point to your nose. Without looking at your hands, point to your nose. Spread your left hand out. Everyone spread their left hand. That's so cool. Now this is how you worship the Lord. Like this. <laughs> Okay, with your right hand, point to your nose. Right hand. Now with your right hand, point to your thumb. With your right hand, touch your okay, touch your nose. Yeah, with your right hand. Now with your right hand, touch your thumb without looking at your hand. Touch your left thumb. Hold, hold your hands up. Hold. Okay. Do I let go of my nose? With your right hand. Touch your nose. Now with your right hand again, touch your thumb without looking up. With your right hand, touch your nose. Now touch your ring finger. With the same, keep your left hand open. Your right hand is the one alternating. With your right hand, touch your nose again. Now touch your Index finger. Hold your hands up. I can see guys, some guys right in front of them, they can see it. Your left index finger. Yeah. Okay, now I want you to do one thing that will change it. Close your eyes. Oh, okay. Everyone close your eyes. Now touch your nose with your right hand. Touch your index finger with your right hand. Touch your nose with your right hand. Now touch your pinky finger with your right hand. Okay. I'm just going to open your hand, your eyes out. Okay. Did you did your thumb? Yeah. Did, your thumb did anyone find the difference between when your eyes are open and yeah. when your eyes are closed? Yeah. You were finding it hard to be a win. Yes. Did anyone? You started sort of losing awareness of where your hand, your left hand was? If you didn't, that's, that's fine. But what I'm trying to point out to you is that your body needs, every member needs each other. The, the Bible talks about so clear, like Romans 12, it talks about being a sacrifice. Where? In the body of Christ. Read the rest of the chapter. Be a sacrifice, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. We're, we're all for it. And then you've got the, the verses underneath it, it says, as we are many members of one body. And then it says in verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. Let it be real. Let us commend the other. Like, every member in this congregation and the body of Christ is crucial to the body. That's how we move in unity. You know something the Lord showed me really awesome? 
He said, this is, this is what unity is. You get to the gates of heaven. Say for instance, someone passes over now, you know, God forbid, for this time. But someone goes now. They stand before the Lord. They say, Lord, I'm here. You know what the Lord will say? Wait for the rest of them. And I ask him, what do you mean, wait for the rest of them? He said, I'm the one that creates the new heaven and the new earth. The new heaven is the one that we will inherit. You got the saints of old in the, the old heaven. And I, and I was I just asking the Lord, why a new heaven? He goes, because the first one, Satan, fell out of it. You see it now? Everyone inherits the new heaven at the same time. That's how the unity the body of Christ is. You know? It's not like, oh yeah, I'll go here first, Lord, and the Lord says, yes, wait for the rest of the body now. It, doesn't it say in Corinthians 11? When you come to eat, tarry one another. Tarry means to wait upon the other person. You know, so. Yeah, praise the Lord, eh? By this we know that we love the, the children of God and we love God and keep His commandments. Amen? Amen. And this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. Did you know your love for the Father is displayed for your blood, your love for your brother? In saying so, you don't overcome first because you love your brother, you overcome first because you love God. Yeah. That you may help the brother. Why is it why is this so important? Because no matter how many individuals here when we depart. It's here that we feed and edify one another and out there, but more so in here, together as a body. You know why it's so important? Because there's husbands and wives here that have gone through trials, that husbands and wives here that have overcome. There's single men and women here that have gone through trials, that single men and women here have overcome. You see why this is so important? It's easy, it's easy to perceive the thought of saying that you love the ministry more than you love me, that's why you're always here. No, we love here and here because we all edify from one another. And that's the importance of fellowship. I want to show you the last video. Is it the last video? That's the time. Yeah? Now, in this video, it's smashed. <coughs> No sound, please. We'll just do the visual. Now, this video absolutely destroyed me because not only did it display the evilness of Satan, but it also displayed the grace of God. So we'll play with that audio, please.
Now, I watched the full video, I guess, for 18 minutes. It's not all that. That smashed me. I had to rebuke myself when I watched this video. Because straight away the mindset said, what if that was your daughter? And straight away I rebuked myself, regardless, he was a child. It's very easy for us to look at that child with compassion. Did you see those men? Did you see how much and how the urgency in them searching for that child did? But did you also see the cautious, the cautiousness of it? Now, I'm not going to cry about all my crying before the first one. That's your brother. That's your Christian video. If you want to watch it later, if you want to see the link, I'll show you. That's your brother. Don't be so keen, quick to bite and devour one another. To be quick to pull each other out of the fire. You see how quick they are? Some of us get buried underneath all that dirt, the flesh. It's easy for you to judge and put your feet up. But by the grace of God, we should work like that man in the sense of helping one another. Do you truly love each other? At the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. When your focus comes off Jesus, that's when you don't care when some of your brethren are buried so deep in sin. You have to pull them out. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering. Long suffering? I was sharing with my household, I said, You taught me so much. In the sense of long suffering and patience and amazing grace. It's considered amazing because there's no other love like it. It is the only love that you receive based upon nothing you can do for you to receive it. There is nothing you can do in order for God to love you. He doesn't come here because there's something about us. No. It's because what's of Him. The enemy doesn't care if you are as simple and pure as a baby. But God does, which is why that child leaves. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just to close your eyes, say so pray. Mercy, Jesus, thank you, Father. So you. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we glorify you this day and forever. Let us be true children. Lord, with the knowledge that we have received today, help us with the Holy Spirit to teach us and give us a deeper understanding on applying it in our lives. That it may affect our heart, mind, soul and strength because it's what we use to worship you. In purity, with a clean conscience, Lord. Help us not to bite and devour one another, but to love each other. With the new commandment that you have given us, to love one another as you have loved us, Lord. Help us to love one another with your love, not our own. Because with our love, we will run out. Help us to abide, Lord Jesus, in your word as you abide in us. Help us to be founded upon the rock, Lord Jesus, for this ministry belongs to you and no one else. Not an apostle, not a prophet, not a pastor, but to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. Glory to your name. Holy are you, Lord. Help us to be holy for you are holy, to be pure for you are pure. Help us to be true believers, Lord Jesus, in these end times. That we be Bible believing, Jesus loving children who are abiding. Your perfect will be done. Nevertheless, not our will, Lord Jesus, but thy will be done. In Jesus' mighty name and the sense say. Amen. Amen.